G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. This here is my BBC Micro, which I've actually had for a little while, uh, and I just kind of haven't featured it on the channel as yet, until now. Um, I really like this machine, um, partly because it is such an iconic computer from the early 80s. Um, it lived and breathed many lives uh, throughout the UK, but also here in Australia. It wasn't uncommon to see these in Australian schools as well. Uh, but today we're going to take a look at a couple of um, upgrades for it. And the first thing I want to look at is video. Now it's currently plugged into this Sony television, uh, just straight composite video, but at the moment there is no colour. So that's the first thing we're going to take a look at. So this has just been powered up normally, and if I punch in a quick program, and I run this, it should do a countdown from 1 to 15 with all different colours. But if I now run this, it obviously appears in all different shades of grey. But we can kind of fix that. Buried up the back near the RF modulator uh, and the composite out, on my machine at least, has a small header pin right here. Two pins. Um, now I'm led to believe that not all boards actually have this, so it might simply be a couple of solder points. But we can literally stick a, um, a jumper on there. If I can do it with the camera in the way. And that alone will now give us composite colour. So now with the machine powered back on, I've put that same little basic program in, and if I go run, we get the same thing, but we actually get all the colours. So that's a very quick and easy mod. But at the end of the day, we're still only dealing with composite video, uh, and in from my experience at least, adding the colour actually makes the composite signal significantly worse. Um, my guess, I know I don't know the specifics behind this, the black and white is simply the luminance signal, uh, and when you put that uh, jumper in, it's then mixing the uh, colour signal with it as well. Um, so it does deteriorate from what I can tell, and you especially notice if you plug it into an LCD screen. But we can do better. If you remember back to one of my uh, Tandy 1000 videos, you'll remember the RGB to HDMI that I got from Derek. Um, and this is a fantastic little device, and it's certainly uh, not limited to just uh, PC-based like CGA and EJ and things like that. This project actually originally started for the BBC Micro. That's what it was originally developed for, and then it was expanded from there. So once again, here is our little device. There's a Pi Zero buried in there, and so on and so forth, and a series of buttons. Um, and mine has a female DE9 plug, so I needed to make up a cable to hook up to the BBC. And this is it here. The BBC uses a six-pin DIN connector. Uh, and it's simply wired to a male DE9. Uh, if you're wiring this up yourself and you've got a device very similar to this one, um, the only real thing that you've got to worry about is that the BBC gives out RGMB, obviously, ground, um, but also one that simply says sync. Now, I'm guessing that's composite sync, um, but either way, you if you're imagining this as a CGA plug, uh, you wire it to the horizontal sync pin on this, which I believe is pin 8. Uh, and on my device at least, that's what it matches up to. So we're all plugged in and we're now on my Samsung uh, 1080p flat panel monitor thing. Uh, and it looks fairly nice and sharp, but if we zoom in, you may see a little bit of artifacting where it's not quite locked onto the signal. Now, this will happen occasionally with the HDMI, the RGB to HDMI, uh, and if we simply hold down uh, switch 3, it will do an auto calibration.
And hopefully you can see now that at least the vast majority of that artifacting has now disappeared. And if we go back to our little basic program, we have all our nice sharp coloured uh, numbers flashing around. So now that we have nice sharp colour video out of our BBC Micro, what are some of the ways we can load software on it? Now this machine is actually decked out with a disk controller, so up until recently I've simply had an external GoTech plug into it, dial up a disk image, off you go. But there are other alternatives, and thanks to Oz Retro Comp, well Tony from Oz Retro Comp, I have this here. This is the Turbo SPI, which is a little uh, micro SD device that plugs into the user port underneath. Uh, we have a replacement ROM and a CD uh, full of documentation. And this is it just here. Uh, the CD has about every manual for every BBC computer under the sun uh, on here, which is kind of nice. Uh, but it also has the user manual for this ROM. Now this ROM is uh, MMFS version 1.45 with BASIC 2. I'm actually not sure what MMFS stands for. Multimedia File System, maybe? I'm going to go with mm, File System. Uh, so that needs to go into the machine. Uh, we then have this little device here, which is the thing that goes into the user port. If I can get it out. And it's only a tiny little thing. We've got our user port connector just here, uh, a micro SD uh, slot, and that's kind of it. And this plugs in kind of underneath the machine. Um, and because I simply have too much time on my hands, I decided to design and print a uh, little cover for it because I figured it's hanging out underneath the machine so yeah why not. So that's my little addition to this project. So that with the cover off our Beeb we can just kind of shuffle the keyboard to one side and here we have our boot ROMs. Now, I'm not actually sure how they're meant to be numbered, if it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But uh, this particular ROM here is my current ADFS ROM to drive the disk drive. Uh, and the instructions say that the MMF, MMFS ROM needs to be in a higher priority slot, which means it needs to go into this empty one just here. So noting our orientation with the notch to the top, this should just drop straight in here. And that's it, that is the ROM installed. Now with the machine flipped over, we have our user port and our little device. Now this micro SD actually comes preloaded with most things you're gonna want. Um, there's a disk image full of games, uh, and another disk image full of uh, utilities. But this simply uh, plugs in here. Uh, and I've even designed this little case so the hooky things uh, actually latch onto it as well. So that's not going anywhere. With the machine booted back up, you can now see that the MMF, MMFS Turbo ROM has loaded as opposed to the normal ADFS one. Uh, and it, in its most simplest terms, we can simply go star dboot zero, which is the uh, image that is currently loaded into zero, well, is by default. And it brings up a nice menu full of games. Uh, now, there are 65 pages of games here which uh, would have to be pretty close to the entire collection. But as an example though, they do seem to be in alphabetical order, which means I can go tab and E, and it will take me straight to E. And that at least gets me a little closer to, as an example, Elite. Now it's not just about loading that disk image. Now that disk image actually has 511 individual uh, disk images within it. 
but you can access them specifically. So for instance, if I go uh, star disk zero, now this is the tricky bit. You need to know what slot a particular disk is in, which can be tricky. Um, and it becomes a bit of an unknown. But if we also go uh, star din, I'm just gonna pick a random number here because I know that disk's full, so 250. We can actually go cat, whoops, sorry, star cat. And we can see that, uh, well, this disk has a whole bunch of games on it. Um, but we can do that uh, and we should be able to go, is it, uh, just simply boot. No. Aha, and you can just boot that disk specifically. So there we go, just a very quick look at some upgrades for my BBC Micro. Uh, it is nice to be able to have ac easy access to a ridiculous amount of uh, software that's on that SD card as standard. Now, you can actually make your own collections. The CD has a little Windows application that uh, basically brings up a window with 511 slots and you can simply dump SSD files straight into it and create your own. Um, you can also create blank ones. So for instance, if you want a save game disc, you can do that. Uh, or if you happen to have the urge to spark up a word processor, you can save it if you want to. But for now, that'll pretty much do it. Um, I'm quite enjoying the incredibly sharp color video that I now have out of this machine. Uh, I will put links in the description to uh, everything that I've shown you here. So the RGB to HDMI um, and the Turbo SPI. Uh, but if you did like this video, or if you found it useful, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can now find the channel on Patreon if you'd like to help us out, just like these wonderful people just here. Uh, but for now, that'll pretty much do it, and I will see you in the next one.